All right. So welcome to the episode of Adding Perspective with Josh. I'm Josh. Um, Coach Energy. I'm Aphrodite. All right. So this week, we're going to talk about this whole premise of dating with potential and hoping, right? In the hopes of that person uh, actually changing. Okay. So the reason why we're going to go down uh, this particular road is I've been here. I've just kind of been talking to a lot of people lately about this idea of, I guess, the future with the person and like really wanting like the best for themselves, but also wanting the best for that person. And sometimes it obviously that starts when you like first meet somebody, uh, you got this idea. They tell you all these things about, you know, I really want to do this you know, for my life or I really want to start this particular business or I really want to be better at this particular thing. And as you get to know that person and as you get to talk to that person and stuff like that, you sometimes you find that week by week, day by day, we still on that same thing. You know, nobody's actually taking any movement on that particular thing. And then it kind of sounds, and then it ends up being like that, that circle of, okay, we still talking about this. Like, <laughs> we still talking about this, right? So this whole idea of, uh, I guess, dating with uh, that whole idea of a person's potential, I want I want to say be careful with that. That's, that's what I want to say, because I think that we could all, you know, been accused in small ways of, you know, that okie doke, you know, like falling for that person because you saw that potential that they had and sometimes they don't live up to that potential, you know. So with this whole premise about dating with potential, though, like, why do you think that, you know, certain, well, why do you think that people fall for the okie doke, right? Like, why do you think that people fall for that, that potential part? Like, what do you guys think? Like, why do you think that people seem to, you know, talk to others or certain people because they see the potential in them. Well, there are a lot of people who really do want the best for their partner and they see that it's in them and they, they may believe that they can help pull it out of them, help to change them, help to push them along. Um, so, for a lot of people, it's it's good intention behind it. Yeah. It was a saying about potential. I can't think of what that saying is. Not potential, uh, intention. It was a saying about intention. I can't think of what that saying is. Um, I had it on the tip of my tongue. I can't think of it. <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> sometimes the whole idea of intention um, gets your feelings hurt like it does like it just it just at the end of the day it didn't it didn't get you the result i guess you you ultimately want but for you aphrodite what about you like what do you think that you know you might certain people might you know go with that potential because you know i'm about like what you just said they really have these high hopes. You know, they have faith in that person. They believe what the person say. You know, they believe that it can happen. But what's jacked up is there might be the only one believing that, right? They might be the only one believing as hard as they're believing because the other person might not be believing that hard. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes the other person just full of talk. You know, they, they talk that talk, but they're they not really ready to walk that walk when it comes down to um having it um doing what it takes to get it get it done to live up to their full potential it could be a lack of confidence of trying to get to that full potential um it could be a lot of things why they not living to their full potential you know what i'm saying it could be just lazy or whatever but it has to be the part of a person who has that potential to live up to it we can't change that person and the thing about it is humans, we seem to feel like we could do that. You know, we, we get down that rabbit hole with them and be like, oh, we could change them. And we could work it out and we can, we have all the hope, all the faith and the love to go with it. But it just don't work when the other person's not willing or they don't have 
what it takes to get it done. Yeah. No. Nah. That's when you get with them intentions and your feelings get hurt because you have all them expectations, you know, and your expectations ain't other person expectation. So you, you, your feelings really get hurt. Yeah. They they do. That's that's kind of in in my experience. That's kind of what I end up seeing is you know, um, you have these types of conversations with those uh, with those individuals and you try to talk to them about you know the potential that they may have. You know, like hey, you can do this, and you know, if you try X Y Z, and that's the other thing too. <laughs> Sometimes when I guess you are uh, like dating someone with potential or even subsequently married to someone that you still see that potential in them. Sometimes I think that um, as a person's partner, people can go too far with trying to help them reach their potential. You know, like sometimes people can go too far with that. And what I mean by that is when you do too much for that person, right? So if they're, say for instance, their thing is to open up a business or something like that. But that's their thing, of course. But as their partner, you're trying to set up their accounts. You're trying to do the bookkeeping. You're trying to find clients. Like you should, you're doing all these different steps, right? But this is not your vision, right? This is not your vision. This is their particular vision. So I think that sometimes, you know, people may go too far with that. Doing too much. Yeah, it ends up turning to like some kind of. <laughs> codependency situation or something like that. Hey. But I think that, like, I think about that um, sometimes. Um, and I'm not sure if that's the difference between, I guess, women and men, right? Like, I'm not sure if there's a, if there's a difference between those two, but um, I need to put it out there like this. But I think that sometimes um, women do that a lot more with men right then men do that with women that's my that's my that's my theory right i'm not i'm not sure if that's the, that's the number though there but i see that a lot where um sometimes women depending on their stage in life are sometimes more prone to take a chance on somebody that they wouldn't normally take a chance on when it comes to that potential per se uh, in hope, right? In hope that that person can turn it around and actually reach that. Person. That's kind of what I. That's kind of what I see. I'm, I'm not sure if that's true, right? But you, you guys wouldn't kind of know because obviously, you guys are women. I agree. Okay. I'm just being <laughs> honest. I agree with. I agree. I don't know the numbers, but you know, via life experience, I agree. I think uh, women do a whole lot. M- too much for potential or who or where he could be or what and a whole lot of other stuff you know so i do agree with that you know a lot of times you know we we do a lot too fast sometimes yes sometimes <laughs> i agree i mean i i mean see how you feel about it i i, I agree yeah not knowing the numbers um I can definitely, mm, yeah, I would say also that a lot of women tend to do that, but it, I don't know, I have to be careful with that because there are quite a few men who will be the investor, you know, they'll be, they'll do the grunt work, they'll help build the, the, the salon, they'll help build a studio, they'll help build something, or they'll be, um, they, they'll assist with the finances, you know, as far as investing in it, you may not necessarily see them uh, once the business gets started. Um, so I, I do believe it goes both ways, but I would, I don't know. I, it, I would probably just say 50, 50 to be on the safe side, just cause Ooh, I don't know the numbers. Really? Cause I know both sides. I don't know. Do I don't see, this is like, like, you know, you, you, you've opened the door now. Okay. okay. You've opened the door, right? <laughs> I don't see very many women putting out no money for no barbershop and no, uh, whatever case may be. <laughs> like, you know, I don't see very many women doing that. Right. Like, but, that, but but you made you made a valid point. Yeah, you see some men breaking off some dollars, you know, open up nail salons and stuff like that. But I don't think that that's more of 
like a potential thing for those particular reasons. I don't think it's that. Like, I don't think it, you could classify that as a potential thing. Why? Because he's believing in her idea, her vision, her dream. And he's his investment is it looks different from, you know, a typical woman's investment. But that's because men and women, uh, we have we have different strengths. You know, they look differently. So for a man, it may just be that they're stronger, you know, with the the financial backing or again, with the physical uh, work of building something, putting something together. And then the women nine times out of 10 are stronger in the areas of the, the administration, the back end, the, you know, setting up the, the company, the LLC, or like you said, getting the customer, the customer base going, the marketing, you know, the talking, uh, promoting it. So, I mean, I think it's to me, it's the same. It just looks differently as far as what each person or each gender rather is um, putting in. But at the end of the day, it's both with the potential, you know, he doesn't know that this business is guaranteed going to sell, you know, if it's a boutique, he doesn't know, you know, how far she's going to go, but he's believing in her idea and her vision and vice versa. You know, she may not know how far he's going to go with the business that he's, you know, attempting to start, but she believes in his vision. And so I don't know, <laughs> those are my ideas. <laughs> Hey, I was gonna let you play that one out like I was. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that, that, I don't know. I, I get, I get what you're saying. I do, but look at it this way, right? Like even the the men that open up these places for the women, right? Most of the time, the women, uh, especially with the nail salon, forever, uh, whatever, they are already nail technicians to begin with, right? Like they already have maybe that thing going for themselves anyway. They just needed the funding for you know, an actual shop or something like that. Mm. Uh, or they already have a particular certification already. They just need, you know, the funding portion. But again, the opposite side of that, you do have that small percentage of men. Yeah, they they already maybe are licensed barbers already and stuff like that. But I have not heard a lot of, you know, are women breaking bread to do that? Okay, well, like the, I'm just saying I've never. This. Well, I'm not saying that either. You know, I'm saying that uh, what you may get from the woman is going to look different from what you get from a man. Yeah, I, I get that. I, I get that. No, but I agree I mean, with that. Too. I'm not comparing apples to oranges of that. Okay. Like that it's just, uh, I, I don't want the the idea of like the potential thing and just the other version of that, which is kind of like just seeing a person make it or seeing a person grow or whatever the case may be to be one in the same, you know, cause it's not necessarily one in the same because if a person's already at a particular level already and all they need is like maybe funding or whatever, like I wouldn't necessarily classify that as more of a potential thing, but if a person, just have ideas, right? They just have an idea. They don't have a license already. They don't have none of that stuff already. That's what I call potential right there because you, they don't have nothing going on but a dream, right? Like a hope, a dream, a wish. Like that's all they got. Right there. <laughs> that's all they got. That's what I'm talking about potential right there because you don't even have nothing to bank your money on at that point. Like all you have is their work. That's it. That's all they got for you. Is they is their word. That's it. So, I can see that. So that's that's kind of what I, what I mean, especially if we're gonna use that um, that example. But I also want to talk about those those people where they have, I guess, a certain level of insecurity. I guess. Uh, and, you, and you're and you hoping that that insecurity changes over time and stuff like that, especially when they, if it's like a trust thing or like if they are hesitant to trust people and you're, you're giving that person all the reassurance in the world saying, hey, you can trust me, you're doing X, Y, Z, I'm trying to reinforce that trust and you're hoping that that whole idea changes one day and obviously that idea don't change. <laughs> and you essentially with a person that has trust issues. 
that's that's kind of a one of those things too is whenever you see things within a person which is i call the red flag moment there um how do you address those, right? Like what, what format do you use to kind of address those things that you see that may be a little shaky, right? Like that may be a little bit of a concern for that person before they turn into a bigger concern later, right? So, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'll just, I'll just say like when, whenever, you know, you are um, in the interview stage of, getting to know someone you see that red flag that may be a concern when is a good time to bring it up <laughs> when you're in the interview stage and you notice it <laughs> you bring it up then like, you immediately, like you immediately bring it up or you just yes because you know because oh god that much time like time is something we can't get back right like so why waste your time with this conversation you you know it's a red flag you know it's a trust issue. You know that. So what you doing to deal with your trust issue? Are you even trying to deal with it? Because some people are all okay with having trust issues. You know, what, are the, what does that look like for the other person? You know, and are you willing to really truly deal with a person with insecurity, trust issues, and trying to jump through hoops all the time and show them like I ain't, I'm not doing that and I'm faithful and I'm this and I that. that's a lot that takes a lot so you got to ask yourself a question like how much are you willing to accept that yeah but they, but they got potential though okay but the potential has nothing to do with the fact that they ain't trying to address the issue <laughs> they're not trying to address it they have all these other great qualities though. Okay, but how much quality is going to be if every time you turn around, it's always, where you been? What you doing? Where you going? How you get that? Did it, did it, did it, did it, did it, did it. Showing up at your job, showing up on the phone. Like, yeah. let me see, let me see. Come on, you got to FaceTime me. That's a lot. Mm hmm. Yeah. Let me hear your surroundings. Like, I'm just being honest. Like, <laughs> so are you willing to deal with all that just for potential? That's a question you gotta ask yourself. You're right. You're right. A lot of people ask themselves that question. A lot of people still move forward, I tell you. They do, because they have so many great qualities. I hear that a lot. Oh, they have so many other great qualities, right? They have, all, they, oh, they're a good person and they may have kids, they take care of their kids and all this other kind of stuff. And you start comparing that to their, you know, that flaw that they may have. And sometimes all the greater qualities just kind of outweigh that, like outweigh that one thing or whatever until you figure out on down the line, hmm, maybe I should have weighed that a little bit more heavy, right? <laughs> like maybe I should have put a little bit more weight on that, um, on that particular like category. Um, but I think that the only way that you can actually do that, uh, I guess, especially then is to like, just take your time with, you know, really getting to that next stage with a person, you know? Like, I don't think that people take their time enough. Okay. 100% agree. People rush into relationships and taking that next step way too fast without doing their thorough due diligence. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think a lot of that is like people really just knowing what they want out of, uh, uh, I guess a mate. And then also knowing what they want in general from just themselves, like what do they, what do they want? Um, cause if you don't know what you want yourself, it's kind of hard to find, you know, what you need from another person, you know? That's true. Um, and I think a lot of people, they get kind of lost, lost in that. Um, and they subsequently try to figure out themselves. Then also try to figure out that person. And it's too, I, won't, I wouldn't say it's too late, but they in that relationship. But they in it by the end. Yeah, they in that relationship too deep to try to figure it out at that point. And it's just like a scary thing to actually do. Um, because by the end, you can't really change uh, the person at that point. Well, you can't change them at all. They have to want to change. 
Yeah, yeah, but depending on how deep you into it, right? You just <laughs> got a trap. You know, just like what do you do with that? You just, you know, you gotta deal with it. No, or you can leave. Right. It depends on again. Depends on how deep, right? How deep you are into this. You still got the option to leave. The option to leave is there. It's always there. So it doesn't, doesn't matter how deep you are into that. Situation. The option to leave is always there. So it doesn't matter how deep you are into that. The option to leave <laughs> is always there. It is always the option. <laughs> it is always on the table. Uh, now, whether you go pick it up, that's on you. But it's always there. Uh, <laughs> if it's jacking up your piece, you got the option to leave. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, I think to a certain degree, yeah, you always have the option to leave. Um, so, a certain degree? What's the, yeah, what's the degree? I mean, what, what's the other option where that's not an option? Right. What's the other situation or scenario where that's not an option? Well, I mean, there's, you know, resources. No, we don't know. There's resources for people to get, you know, before that option of leaving is actually taken taken seriously there's resources you know you can try to work but it's still an option though yeah, yeah. i wouldn't say that that's the option <laughs> is one per se after you explored all the other options there's other options before you know breaking up a when, okay so we're not saying there is no other option so i think man energy was on a on no um level of thinking that you were I, saying that it wasn't the option to leave wasn't there at all y'all at going, all y'all going nuclear okay y'all didn't even worry about anything <laughs> y'all going just nuclear just go straight just cut no. it off <laughs> just cut it off okay no 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 <laughs> no 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 no, no. 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 I, at least i maybe we I wasn't. Can, can we jump on it tr- with me we weren't saying <laughs> let that be the first choice Okay. Yeah, that is, okay. is an option once you have exhausted all of your other options. Okay. Yeah. That's I'm, I'm one for, hey, you get together, you stick with that thing, unless it's a life or death situation. You know, y'all need to work it out, period. Mm-hmm. So. Okay. But the option is still there. <laughs> I can't do that here, okay? Just, just break it back around. Oh, I mean, because the way that you were saying it was like, nope, people ain't got no choice. And it's, that's just not true. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, people out. Everybody has choices. I mean, life is about choices. Everybody has choices. We just had to clarify that because it really made it seem like it wasn't an option, and it's the option. Yeah. Okay. Everybody got options. We've agreed on that. Everybody to leave, options. if that's the case. <laughs> yeah, but that, that's that's the thing because we were talking about, I guess, red flags stuff like that um so i think that when it comes to like red flag um i'm thinking everybody's red flag is a little different um depending on who the person is and and what they're kind of looking for and stuff like that uh, but I, I, that's the thing about those types of flags do you think there is a standard like a standard okay these are things that um you should definitely look for when it comes to like you know, that next step with a person. Like, do you think that there's a standard like item that people should definitely like consider when it comes to like a red flag for like dating somebody with potential? Yeah, uh, their their temperament, you know, are they Uh quick to, you know, quick to get angry or, you know, are they like, yeah, are they quick to have a, a temper? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Sure. Mm-hmm. I agree. Yeah. About uh, uh, I- I- any inconsistencies with telling the truth. Yeah. For sure. Trust. That should probably should be number one. Communication. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one too. Yeah. Um, It'd be a lot of red flags. With, some people don't know how to communicate, or uh, is. Or they don't understand um, the response, or they don't listen. Some listening is a red flag. You know, you listening to me—that's a red flag. That's the issue for me. 
but I, a lot of people have that issue like they not they don't feel like they're being listened to but they just like overlook it until it becomes out of control or it becomes the issue but it's been a red flag for a long time they just didn't address it yeah yeah which goes to that that other you open the door on that one. So, how do you know? How do you know if a person is actually listening to you or not? Though? Like, what are the indicators that tell you that a person's listening? So, one of my indicators is like you being able to really, truly uh, regurgitate what I'm ta- what, what I'm speaking about. It's, it's an issue when like I'm speaking to you and you can't even tell me if I said A or B. Like, you're not listening at all whatsoever. You know, so you can, once you start really like having a conversation with a person and you study that person, you, you can be able to tell they really truly listening to you or not. You know, even if they're able to regurgitate with it, sometimes, you know, people are like, well, they can say what you said. Yeah, they can say what I said, but did they understand? Because you're uh, to me, I need for you to listen to understand. You can respond a hundred million times. That don't mean you understood what I was saying. Yeah, get that. Hmm. Okay. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna add something to the red flag list. We said uh, anger. No, something else too. Involving other people in your relationship. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, because then that that will there are some people who will when they themselves need to make a choice you know for the two people that are in a relationship some people rely too much on outside people and their opinion in order to make a decision on the relationship so that can get real draining real fast and frustrating okay I can agree with it Okay, I got I got something to add to that. Okay. <laughs> okay, so uh, I think there's a difference between um, family members, friends being involved in a particular relationship and a person being in the relationship that cannot make decisions for themselves. Yeah, those are two completely different situations. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Because most times um, a red flag I and mean, just... It's an idea of a red flag. Is a person that's indecisive, like a person that doesn't, that don't know how to make a decision without validation from other sources. Oh, you know? people. Because I think that that's, that's a big red flag too. Because you all, I mean, to me, I think that you want, or a person generally would want a person that can stand for them, you know, themselves, and actually make decisions for themselves versus having to like either wait on the person or just ask 18 other people, should I do this type stuff, you know? Yeah. That can get annoying. And like, it can create like on. a dependency. Yeah. yeah. A codependency on no, yeah, that's mm. Yeah. I can yeah, that would probably aggravate. Yeah. That would be very um interesting. But it happens though. It ha- it happens quite often. <laughs> it does because I, I think um, I guess I guess the and that's the other thing too. Uh, that's something. That's a small thing that I don't think that people would notice because it's such a, a I guess a might a minute thing for people to like really identify that a person cannot make decisions for themselves. Like you would really have to pay attention to that person's decision making and how they make their decision in order to figure out are they making their decisions or they got this list of people that they call to help them make decisions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I think that that's one of the underrated ones, though. I think yeah. it is. If you can't, that's something that you can't identify on, uh, I guess, quickly. Like, just, just strictly just asking a person questions like that maybe (laughs) because even in those questions and the the getting to know you phase if they're still having a difficult time in providing responses you know that can make you kind of tilt your head a little bit 
and then just start paying attention to, you know, future conversations, you might be able to see it depending on how extreme, you know, it is yeah. with that particular person. Mm -hmm. mm. Maybe they're just not a good communicator. Like maybe they just don't know how to communicate their emotions and their feelings. Like, see, that's what I'm saying. Like it's the skies, it's the mass thing right there. Like you don't know. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> see, that's, see, that's the thing. Uh, and I think that that's, um, I think that that's kind of why I was saying like earlier that people should really take their time with really getting to know people because there's so many different, um, not really inconsistencies, but there's so many different um, ways that a person interprets information, then also ways that they communicate how they feel about certain things too. And it's very difficult to kind of determine what's a red flag, like what's a legitimate red flag, or what is that person just not being able to formulate how they feel about them. Like, what's the difference? Yeah, you'll find out over time, you know? So I mentioned that it, it will make the other person just pay more attention to it so they can then determine which of those two you were just describing it is. Yeah, because I think that a lot of the ones that we were talking about previously, those are like straight, <laughs> they're straightforward, mm -hmm. right? If that yeah. person aggressive, then yeah, you can see that that person a little aggressive, or right? if that person is loose with telling the truth, oh yeah, you can see that. Like, that, okay, like you were supposed to be here at, you know, five, you give me all these excuses about where you were and stuff. Like, uh, I wanted that. No. Uh, then you gotta. <laughs> And then we were talking about the whole communication thing and stuff like that. And like I said, you can obviously tell when a person is uh, not a great communicator when it comes to certain things. So those are, for the most part, fairly obvious mm. things that you can kind of kind of see. Um, so let's let's add to this list. I really want to add to this list. Um, is hygiene a, a nitpicky thing if a person is not hygienic is that a, in is general that a, or personally like for are you asking us our personal yeah, like for a red flag right? like for a red flag like if it they, is if they like it is you know, like burp and stuff around you or just i don't know about the burp around when you say hygiene i thought you was Speaking like, of like, no, that's that's funky uh, breath, your booty, all yeah. inclusive, all, of, it's, it's all inclusive. inclusive. Like, yeah. if you burp, I, I don't know if that would be a red flag. I mean, shoot, some people they, they I think it's individual, it. but <laughs> if you think about over hygiene overall, you know how they carry themselves and how they dress, how they smell. If they all rough looking, you know what I'm saying? They don't, they don't handle all this. Yeah. Yeah. It could be oh. a flag. Okay. Okay. Might, maybe mine was a little bit more extreme, but yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I had to get clarification first. Like, you know, how do we, in what way should we answer this question? <laughs> I mean, there's That's a, why I'm there's like, a, there's, there's not a particular way that you should just really just answer that question. I was just like, I was just wondering was, uh, is, is hygiene a flag? Just, you can just, we can just go with the normal hygiene stuff. Is that a flag, right? To someone yeah. who that, you yeah. know, to where that's gonna bother them. Yeah. Wouldn't that bother anybody that a person is not- No, everybody's no. not bothered by that. I, I'm about to tell you that now. You're right. Okay. So I said, it depends. Like, that's why I was like, are you asking us personally or in general? Because for me, yes, but in general, for a lot of people, it, it doesn't not. bother them. No. Okay. I don't know the numbers, but it don't bother them. Because okay. hygiene can be fixed with, you know, you let's just say someone sees that a person is not as hygienic as they would like, but then they decide to move forward in a relationship with them that can be fixed with, you know, being creative and, you know, showering together and, you know, waking up in the morning and, you know, you're side by side, double vanity, brushing your teeth together. And, you know, you 
go over. There's different ways of how you can and put the toothpaste on a toothbrush and brush. I mean, it. you know what I'm saying? You got to do what you got to do. You know what I'm saying? Make it a game. Be <laughs> like, all right, on your market set, go. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, <laughs> you can get around that for some people. So, you know, that's not going to be like a deal breaker. And, you know, to where it's like a red flag for some people, especially if the other qualities are like top notch, you know? So it just depends. Personally, yeah, I could do it though. Yeah. I mean, in, in my in my head, I as you were describing it, I can just see somebody just waiting for somebody to go to sleep and then just get out that the brush and just scrub them down while they sleeping. Just you know? Up under their own pit. Yeah, just, yeah, just, just. Do not entertain Josh today. <laughs> I just, I just said that's what was going through my mind when you were saying that, right? I just wow. wait till they go to sleep, just do give them a full body makeover, like yeah, we got it. all of it. Okay, just they wake up, they're a brand new person. <laughs> you know, there's ways to get around that. Okay, <laughs> you know, okay. The, the trade off is is something way more important. Yeah, yeah, the trade off way more important. Way. <laughs> that's right. That's right. I'm going to be top tier. Okay, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that means a lot of trade off. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think that's part of, part of my personal experience. Like that. I think I just kind of had that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe that's one of, maybe that's one of my red flags right there. Oh, like, it is. If I see that, mm, 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 no. Mm, mm. That's funny. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that is too funny. Hey, just everybody got that one thing, like that that one thing that they just, do. They just would not pick. They wouldn't put up with it. They see that one thing, automatic X. Yeah. <laughs> X <to> That's true. <laughs> That's how true. Many, how many good qualities you got? That one thing. <laughs> no. <laughs> so close. Yeah. Gotta go. <laughs> right. That's, That's, That's true. That is so true. That's yeah. true. That's what it is. Like, but that's that's so different, though. I mean, I guess it's, it's I guess that's so interesting that everybody possibly has that one thing that they could automatically just text a person out. But if that one thing isn't visibly identified, that means that you're just kind of, or a person may be just going with those other potential, you know, red flag until they determine if that other stuff is stuff that they can put up with. You know what I'm saying? Like that, because, right. yeah, because that, that first thing is something that's so specific that if you know if you see it, you just cut that person out. Right. It's, it's different. It's different how, um, I guess, people um, process that. It is. That one thing. Hmm. Maybe that one thing is like that because you, people had a traumatic like episode with that one thing with somebody and that's then, true okay i'm not trying to repeat this with anybody else in my entire life anymore it 100%. happens yes uh, it happens it it is yeah they just fall in that market they that's a done deal for them it's a it's a wrap yep they can't get past it and in all honesty they should be very truthful about it. I can't, like, I can't do that at all. Yeah. So is that something that you tell somebody on like the uh, the first time, second time, third time, fifth time meeting them? Just say, hey, this thing right here, this one thing right here, if you just can't deal with it. If you got this thing right here, this might not work out for us. <laughs> this, this right here, this might not work. <laughs> I think it works itself into a conversation. Okay. In all honesty, you know what I'm saying? I think it works itself into a conversation. Or it might, they the other person might say something that might spark, like, oh, hell, nah, I can't do this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it might just be, it might be a word, it might be a gesture, it just might be something that they'd be like, oh, I'm good. Like, no. But I think it really works itself into certain conversations. Unless, you know, depending on the individual who can just be very blank and be like, I'm, I can't do this right. This is a no for me. 
period. You know, um, I can't waver. I can't, we, we can't come, come compromise. That's enough. Yeah. Uh, I would say that it, if it, so you gotta be careful with that. Um, it should come up in conversation sooner than later, mm -hmm. because if it's that important, then it needs to be discussed or exposed or whatever sooner than later on. Right. However, depending on what that thing is, you have to be <clears throat> careful, especially these these days, because some people will take that information and will That's uh, true. become or will intentionally not do it, even if it's a part of what who they are, what they normally would do. They will intentionally not do it because you have just given them that, hey, if you do this, we're done. So a person may be like, oh, okay, well, let me make sure I don't do that for as long as I can, because I already know that it's an automatic, you know, it's an automatic no-go. And so you have some people who will um, be, mm, there's a word I want to use, but they'll, they'll strategically use that against you. So you kind of mm. have to be careful with what it is. So for an example, like if it's something as simple as <laughs> something that they can't change, like, okay, if for a person, if having kids or having been married before is an automatic no-go for them. Like if, if they're dating someone who has kids and they don't want to date someone with kids, then that's something that's easy to be like, okay, do you have kids or not? Have you been married or not? Because they can't change that. However, if it's more of like a behavioral type of thing, then a person can, they can finesse themselves for a while, show you that representative for a little while um, because you've, kind of you know told them that that's your no-go but then at the same time like it really just depends on who you are and how how confident you are in your ability to really see a person for you know who they are all that kind of like if you can see beyond the who they're showing you then it doesn't matter how early you explain that or, or tell them that this is your one thing that you you know it's just a no-go for you so there's a lot of different factors in there. Um, but yeah, for me, it's still sooner than later because you don't want to waste unnecessary time if it is something that that other person is actually going to do. Yeah. No, yeah. I get that. Yeah, I get that. Hmm. So are there, uh, would you consider, are there like boundaries of any kind that can be set for any of these instances that we brought up with people in general? Like, can boundaries be set with these people, or is it, uh, or does it depend on the stage of the relationship where boundaries can be set? I so think boundaries the can be yeah, set regardless. Than being married, somebody. I mean, for me, your boundaries are your boundaries, period. Like, if you don't want someone to cross over the line in any area, that's going to be set when you're first meeting someone, when you're deep into a relationship with someone, or even if it's just a complete stranger, you know, your boundaries are your boundaries. You don't want them to be crossed at all. Um, yeah, yeah, so I don't, I do believe that boundaries can be set no matter how early on in the relationship or dating phase that you are with the person. So Josh, are you saying when you say boundaries can be set, like after, after you realize it might've been like a, a um, violation and then or red flag and then you be like okay so i need to say are you saying like after the fact can mm -hmm. a boundary be set mm -hmm. yes yes i believe after the fact a boundary can be set yeah now depending on the other individual whether or not you know how good they accept the boundary um that's a whole nother, com you know, topic or whatever. And know that I think the person that's setting the boundary needs to understand, like explain the boundary. I believe, you know, you need to communicate the boundary um, because how you gonna set a boundary and you're not communicating with the person about what it is or whatever. But also knowing that if that boundary is crossed again, what are the repercussions? Yeah. yeah, I would say it also depends on how high on that list or level is that a no-go or a deal breaker, you know, that particular mm -hmm. thing. For some people, 
they may have some, you know, leniency there, but for other things and for other people, it's like, nah, like I, I saw, I saw enough, like, I don't, I don't want to see anymore. I'm done, you know? So right. it can be depending on what the thing is and um, if there's leniency there. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think the bound the boundaries are going to be more for the items that are not the the automatic cut a person off them. Okay. Like, yeah. Yeah. That option out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, there's an option now. Yeah. So, be. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of I think where the boundaries are gonna gonna come in um, when it comes to that kind of stuff. But I was just kind of curious about the boundaries part because we were talking about the whole premise of like dating uh, with potential and also possibly being married to somebody that had that same level of you know potential. But I think that the boundary would be more for um, married people than dating. I think why. Because uh, I think with dating, um, I think that um, people tend to, uh, well, in a perfect world, you should take a little bit more time with that person in order to establish certain boundaries in the beginning. And you have a better option of like moving the either away from that person or staying with that person when you're dating versus the complications of being married to a person like it's a lot it's a not and this this i don't want to keep bringing bringing that part up yes in each level you have an option to leave yes i get that <laughs> but okay in the last level it's a, it's a lot more complication for that. depending on if you got house kids whatever whatever and that's not saying that the person can leave right i say that at all i'm just saying it's a lot more it's a lot more complicated that's what I'm saying. Like, I thought it would be a little bit more stringent to actually set those firm boundaries when you're uh, in a deeper, committed relationship. And I, that's not saying that you shouldn't set boundaries when you're like dating or anything like that. But I'm thinking that it should be a little bit more stringent whenever you're um, married. Hmm. I would think the opposite. It's a different type of relationship. It's a different type of relationship. I, like if you're just casually dating, casually dating someone, um, depending on the type of relationship it is, you need to determine if you see, even see a future with that person or not. Like you even, you know, see something further with that person. It could be just be a casual situation where it's like, we just kicking it. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's not like it's like a, a serious, type thing depending on that particular relationship but if you happen to see a future with that person and you want to move toward marriage with that person that's kind of why I think that most people start really setting no stringent boundaries with those types of people hmm. right that's the latter what you were just explaining is uh, what I was referring to where I was saying I would think the opposite you know it definitely would depend if two people who are dating if they're just casually dating or dating with intention of, yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Cause that's kind of what I'm saying. Like if you just casually dating a person or you just not really have not set a future with that particular person. I I've seen people like not really set accurate boundaries with certain people. That, Cause it's like, I'm not, I'm not sure if um, those people see the value in it. Right, like setting those types of boundaries um, in that format of a relationship. That's, that's all. Okay. No? Okay, good. Because <laughs> 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 I, can, I, can I can see both of you right here. I can just see it. I can see it in your eyes, man. Right? I can see it. Okay, so. <laughs> uh, it's so funny. I like watching your eyes. I can see it. <laughs> Um, <laughs> oh, so wow. the breakdown of this, this particular episode, right? Um, I, I think that whenever um, people decide to start to get to know someone, um, definitely take your time mm -hmm. uh, and definitely not um, consider being with someone because of the 
person that they can ultimately be. Mm. I agree. You know, I think it's important for people to be with the person for who they are currently. And if they happen to grow into more, kudos, right? <laughs> kudos. <laughs> kudos for that Hooray! person. <laughs> they have to grow, that's good, right? But if they don't quite just grow into something different, that's okay too. Because like I said, you you uh potentially fell in love with that person the way that they were or uh, are. So I agree. Mm-hmm. Yep. In the final word. You do have an option out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my bad. <laughs> I write that. <laughs> <laughs> That's the final word. That is the option. <laughs> oh man. I, I want the people to understand. Okay. To write that down. Please yeah. take notes. <laughs> yeah. I, I'll add to um to that. You know, it's 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 okay to see a person's potential. However, look at their patterns, look at their behavior to then determine if that person has a high likelihood of pursuing their potential, of unlocking their own potential, because ultimately it is up to them. However, just to blindly Uh, consider being with someone strictly off of what they can possibly do or who they can possibly become you're 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 risking a lot and ultimately your life because your time is your life so Mm -hmm. those are my words good thought good thought right there another episode of adam perspective with josh i'm josh i'm coach energy i'm aphrodite wow yeah